Hey there, freshwater folks. Skip here with another weekly science video. This week I will be covering a brief introduction to Earth science. So the early solar system was little more than just space dust floating around circling an early proto-sun. And over time, this space dust slowly collided into other space dust, forming balls or protoplanets that eventually grew big enough to be actual planets. Um, this process of little space bits colliding and forming bigger space bits is called accretion. And an easy way to think of accretion is to think of a snowball rolling down a hill. As the snowball collides with other little bits of snow on its way down, it grows bigger and bigger. So with early Earth, all these collisions that it was experiencing caused the early Earth to be pretty hot and molten and completely unsustainable for life. But over time, our planet was able to cool. And we now have a cool crust, but on the inside of the planet, we still have a molten core and a kind of melty, little bit molten uh, mantle, which is soft because it's hot. So the crust of our planet kind of floats on the inner layers of our planet. Because it's floating and moving around, there are actually borders and sections of our planet that you can uh, differentiate from each other. These, all call, uh, these sections are called tectonic plates, and there are two types. Uh, there are continental plates, which is like land material, that I'm sure you're all familiar with, and oceanic plate, which is ocean material. It's underneath all the water. Uh, so this process of land floating and forming sections uh, out of the plates is called tech or continental drift, and it was discovered by a scientist named Alfred Wegener, who actually was not supported and had to fight very hard to get the uh, scientific community at the time to recognize and appreciate all of his evidence. But over time, people did grow to believe it, and it is now the current leading theory on what's going on with our planet, and we have tons of evidence that it's happening. So here is a map of all the plate boundaries of the world. So here is our North American plate, where we live. Uh, the Pacific plate is right next to us. And then you can see all the other plates around the world. And they're all kind of divided into general shapes of the continents, though there are smaller plates mixed here and there. So mountains, a lot of mountains anyway, are caused by two tectonic uh, continental plates colliding together. And this collision together is called a convergent boundary. And what happens is the uh, two large masses of land hit each other and kind of like rams colliding with each other, they both lift up because neither force gives way. Uh, the Himalayas are the largest example of a convergent boundary. The mountain was formed by the Indian plate over here colliding with the Eurasian plate forming this mountain range right here. And you can see it again here. Yeah, the Himalayas are actually the largest mountain range in the world, and they're pretty beautiful. So there's another way mountains can form. There are a few ways. Uh, some mountains are formed by magma rising. So how this works is that sometimes uh, magma will break through the crust, and over time this magma will typically solidify into a structure called a batholith. It's a really funny word, but all it is is just magma that got frozen underground. And over time, these batholiths, sorry for my pronunciation, can be caused to rise to the surface by uh, geological forces. And these uh, batholiths rising uh, can create mountains. So the Sierra Nevadas, which are in California, many of you have probably been to them, are actually made from a collection of batholiths, which uh, all kind of join together to form the largest batholith in the world. It's pretty impressive. Um, because of this, the, or, so this magma for the Sierra Nevada batholith formed slowly underground. Because it formed slowly underground, it was able to form a lot of crystals. And if you go into the Sierra Nevadas, you'll be able to notice that the rocks, or most of the rocks there, are made of granite. Which granite is a whole bunch of crystals that grew together, more or less. So ocean trenches are another thing that can happen with uh, plate boundaries. So when a continental plate collides with a, a smaller, lighter oceanic plate, 
the oceanic plate will be pushed underneath the heavier continental plate. This interaction is called a subduction zone, and subduction zones often have trenches, which you may know of the Marianas Trench. It is the deepest, uh, biggest trench in the world, and it's the lowest point in our planet. Uh, these subduction zones can also cause volcanoes. They are typically the greatest source of volcanoes on our planet. And so the Pacific plate borders a bunch of continental plates. And these borders are largely subduction zones, which cause magma to rise from the surface as the continental, or rise to the surface as the oceanic plate is pushed down. So the magma rising to the surface is volcanoes. And the Pacific Plate has so many volcanoes that the edges of it are nicknamed the Ring of Fire. So here is a picture of the Ring of Fire. Each triangle you see is a volcano. And this is the largest amount or largest concentration of volcanoes in the world. And it all has to do with the subduction zones of this Pacific Plate. It's pretty cool stuff, I think. And then some volcanoes are caused by hot spots in the crust. A hot spot is kind of like a weak spot that the molten materials from the core of our planet are able to push up through the crust and slowly uh, distribute magma to the surface. So Hawaii is actually a hot spot. So some of you may have noticed in the Pacific Plate picture, you can see Hawaii here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's no plate boundaries there, but Hawaii has a hot spot there, and as you can see here, the magma rises to the surface and creates a new island. But the hot spot does not move, while the Pacific Plate does move. And over time, as the Pacific Plate moves, more and more new islands are formed because the magma keeps on uh, spouting up, but there's nothing new above it, so it forms new land. Uh, that's about all I have for you folks this week. If you have any questions or would like me to go into more detail with any of these topics, I would love to. I hope to see you all soon.